What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Classically Music. This episode marks the beginning of the ERA series, in which we will be dissecting classical music and looking at it through the lens of its different musical eras. This video, however, will provide you with a high-level overview of the different musical eras. And in later videos, we will be looking at these different eras in more depth by looking at composers, pieces of music, and society as well because it had a huge implication on how music was being created. So let's get right into it. So let us begin with the era of early music. We're going to start with Europe as classical music started there and we're going to understand it from a political lens. Early music first started the year 1000 and ended in the year 1400. And that time marked the dominance of Europe by the church. The church had utmost control over every single aspect of life. More importantly, and more relevant to this channel and to this video, music. Music back then was used only for worship by monks, not for entertainment, as we know of it today and in previous or in later classical music eras. Monks, interestingly, would chant certain hymns instrumentally unaccompanied, so you didn't have any musicians or instruments accompanying these monks. And it's also interesting to look at how they used to read notes. They didn't have the notes that we know of today. They used to use numes which meant that were certain lines that went up or down a certain letter in a certain chant to help them, to help guide them and show them that now it's time to go up or it's time to go down. Later on in the 11th century as well, we had a very famous, very smart and intelligent person named Guido D'Arezzo, who created the staff that we know of today. And that is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do. He created it to help monks chant more efficiently and effectively. However, at the same time, he created an unintentional problem for the church because he paved the way for more secular forms of music to be composed. So more innovation, more development in compositions. For music used to be passed on passed down generation to generation through memorizing. Just imagine, it started all from Jewish and Roman traditions, people memorizing these chants and passing them on to later generations. So imagine the endless world of possibilities that this theorist, this monk, has created. So this marks the beginning of the Renaissance era of music which started in the year 1400 and ended in the year 1600. Again, this era marked the beginning of more secular forms of music to be published. But not only that, but also for a form of music called polyphony. It's simply the idea of more than one musical line or more than one melody being sung at the same time by different people. Previously, in the era of early music, you had people, or monks more specifically, chant hymns, the same melody, in unison. But this era was marked by more polyphonic music, so we had more melodies intertwining, creating more beautiful melodies and just chants that just mesmerized the public. However, worshippers still remained Un, they were unamused because this didn't help them or allow them to clearly hear chants in church or in masses. So to work around this issue, a form of music, another, was created and it was called a motet. And it was characterized by polyphonic music, the singing of different melodies at the same time. However, remaining instrumentally unaccompanied, and this would be to the comfort of the different worshippers. 